If you are a Power BI user and are using the latest version of Power BI Desktop, that is anything newer than November 2023, then you must have come across a new tab in Power BI interface, which is the DAX Query View. But the big question is, what does this do and how can you use it in your daily workflow? So in this video, we are going to discuss top five main usages of DAX Query View, which will take your report developing capabilities to the next level. So if you're interested, then keep watching. So before we get into the usages of DAX query view, let's see how you can get to this tab. So if you are on a latest version of Power BI, that is anything newer than November 2023, and if you have enabled the preview features, you'll be able to see this fourth tab here on the left side, which says DAX query view. Just in case you're not seeing this particular tab, then that means either you're not on the latest version or you have not enabled the preview features. So update your Power BI. And then once you've done that, come to file, go to options and settings, options. And from here, click on this preview features scroll down and here you will see a small checkbox here which says DAX query view. Enable this and press OK. Now you'll be able to see this fourth tab here which says DAX query view. Click on this tab now and we'll just quickly go through the interface so that we can understand what each section of this new tab does. The top section is where you write your queries and you also have a run button here to run your queries. The bottom section which says result is where you'll results will be generated. The results which comes in this view is always in a tabular form. At the right side, you'll see a data section which will display all the tables that are there within your Power BI data model. So now let's just quickly import a data set into Power BI so that we can see all the uses that we have with this new DAX query view. The data we are using today is a sales data and you can download the same from the link in the description. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our reporting view. And from here, I'm going to click on this get data and click on text CSV, select the data. Now I'm going to simply load the data into my model. Now, as you see, the data has been loaded here. I'm going to go back to the DAX query view. Now within this DAX query view, you need to remember two main keywords. First one is evaluate, which is going to be used on all your DAX queries. And second one is define, which can be used to define a measure within your DAX query view. Now let's look at all the usages of DAX query view. And while we are looking at those usages, we're going to cover these two keywords, which are evaluate and define in detail. So the first usage of DAX query view is data exploration. Now, believe it or not, DAX queries can be used similar to a select statement that we use in SQL queries. Now, an example of this is instantly visible in the DAX query view. When we load a data, Power BI instantly generates a evaluate statement, which is simply giving you the top 100 row items from the table that you just loaded. So if I just select this and run this, it will show you the result output at the bottom. Now, this is similar to writing a select statement saying select top 100 star from sales. Now I'm going to give you a couple of more examples, but there are some inbuilt examples as well for data exploration. So what we can do is just go to this table, right click quick queries. And here it says top hundred rows, which is nothing but the same statement, which has been written here. Now, second option that you have here is show column statistics. If you click that, it will write a query. And what it's doing is it's simply giving you few statistics regarding your columns within your data. If you remember in one of my videos, I've covered a topic for data profiler. This is similar to that, but the advantage is you don't have to go to data transformation to see all those things. You can directly generate a query in the front end and see all the column statistics within your data. Also, if you notice, the moment we created another query, it has automatically added a tab here. So the first query was here, which was running your top 100 rows. And second query, which was giving your column statistics is in this second tab. Similarly, you can add a new tab or a new sheet 
by clicking on this plus icon. So let's say I want to write another evaluate statement, which will fetch all the columns from my sales table. So all I have to do is write evaluate and then write the table name. And if you run this, it will give you all the data from your sales table. Now moving one step beyond that, let's say instead of all the columns, I just need a couple of columns. I can just write selected columns, enter the table name, which is sales. Then after a comma, just write your column names that you want. I want the country column and then I want the revenue column. Close the bracket and run the query again. It will fetch just those two columns for you. Another example, I'm going to write an evaluate statement below the above evaluate statement because I don't want to remove the earlier evaluate statement, maybe because I might need it in future. So I'm going to write an evaluate statement just at the bottom and I'm going to say filter from sales table and give me everything which is from city Chicago. Okay. So I'm going to write city equal to Chicago and without selecting this line, I'm not going to select this line. I'm going to simply run this. Now, if you see the result at the bottom, it seems like you got the same result, but the thing is you got both the results, the result from the top query and also the result from the bottom query. And it has been stored here. So the result one of two says this one, which is the first query. And if you select the second result, it will show you the output from your second query, which was filter statement where we have selected all the columns where the city is Chicago. As you see, it is filter Chicago only. Now this is similar to a select statement where we have added a where clause within it. DAX query view can also be used for debugging and validation. Now this is what I mean. Let's say for example, you want to create a new measure and before creating the measure inside the actual model, you want to see the numbers that measure will generate so that you can quickly validate the values and then maybe at a later stage, create a visualization out of it. Now let's introduce the second keyword that we mentioned earlier, which is define. So I'm going to write define. Now define can be used for multiple purposes, but here we will use the define keyword to create a temporary measure. Okay. So I'm going to write define and after define, I'm going to use a keyword called measure. I'm going to create a temporary measure in the sales table by the name of total rev. And in this measure, I'm going to simply apply a sum formula where it will sum the revenue column. Now, once you create a measure using define statement, Power BI automatically gives you an option to add that measure onto your actual data model. So if you click on this link here, which says update model, add new measure. Once you click it, it will automatically get added to this data model and you'll be able to see this new measure here. Okay. But for now, I'm not going to do that. And writing just the define statement will not do anything. So even if I run this right now, it will give me a error at the bottom. So in order for you to see some values, you need to write an evaluate statement eventually. So I'm going to write evaluate. And now I'm going to use another function, which is summarize columns. Now summarize columns simply groups the data based on your requirement. I'm going to use the city column as my grouping criteria. And I'm going to use that new measure that we just created. Let's name this as total revenue. And then I'm going to use that new measure, which was total rev. Okay. Now let's run this. Now, if you see at the bottom, it has generated a table with city as the grouping and then the corresponding sum of values for total revenue. Now, as I said, you can just quickly check the values if it meets your expectation. And if it does, you can just click on this add new measure. And then this measure will get added to your data model. The third usage of DAX query view is performance optimization. So here's the scenario. So you have to calculate the total revenue within your sales table. To do that, you have two options. Basically, you have two different kinds of measures that you can write to arrive at the same result. And you have to choose between either one of them based on their performance. So to check the performance of each measure before actually creating that measure inside your data model, you will use tax query view. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write evaluate statement and I'm going to use the summarize column function. And within that, I'm going to use the city column. Again, I'm creating a column called total revenue and I'm going to use two types of measures here. Okay. The first 
measure that I can use is sum and I can use the revenue column to get the sum of total revenue, close the brackets. And once done, I can just run this. Now here you do get the results, but what we're interested in looking at is the metric at the bottom. It says success, but in the brackets it says 8.7 millisecond, which means in order for you to run this measure at this level of grouping, which is at city level, it took you 8.7 millisecond. Now let's look at another measure and see how much time does that measure takes in comparison to this one. So we're going to use sum x instead of sum now. And since our data model contains two columns, which are quantity and unit price, we're going to use both of them to calculate our final total revenue. So what we're going to do is we can just copy this entire measure here. And instead of this sum, I'm going to write sum x and we can use sales table and quantity multiplied by unit price. Okay, close the brackets and let's run this now. Just select this line and run. Now, as you see, if you look at the metric at the bottom, it says success 64.2 millisecond, which means to run the same numbers using sum X, it took me 64.2 milliseconds. Now let's see another example here. I'm going to write evaluate. And this time, instead of summarizing anything, I'm going to use the sum of sales revenue directly. But for you to do that, or for you to run a measure directly, you have to use curly brackets before your measure starts. So I'm going to raise curly brackets and write sum and then sales revenue. Close the curly brackets, run this now. Time taken to execute this particular measure was 4.8 millisecond. Now let's do the same thing for sum x. I'm gonna write evaluate a curly bracket, sum x, sales table, quantity multiplied by unit price. Let's run this now. Now if you see the query took me 10.4 milliseconds to run. So now clearly we can see that in this particular scenario, my first measure, which was sum of revenue is more efficient than the sum X. Now, this is only one way of checking query performance. Let me know in the comment section, if you know of any other method, I'll be happy to learn that as well. All right, moving on. Okay. So now the fourth usage of DAX query view is data transformation. And this is very interesting and powerful. To understand how DAX query view can be used to transform a data, we need to go to the table view to understand the requirement. Now, as you see, this is my sales table here. And now we have imported another table in this model by the name of zip. Okay. This contains two column city and zip code. So basically zip code of all the cities, which are there in your sales table. Okay. So the moment I inserted or imported this data automatically in the model view, Power BI has connected these two tables. And if not, you can al always go ahead and connect the columns manually. Now coming back to the table view, the requirement here is I need to create a table and this would be a temporary table, which will be created in DAX query view. And in that table, I need a couple of things. First one, I need the zip code column to be added to my main table. Second, I need to add a new column in this table by the name of quantity category. And we need to add certain conditions to that column to derive the final input. So the conditions are if the sales quantity is less than four, then the quantity category should say low. If the sales quantity is equal to four and less than seven, then the sales quantity should be medium and anything else should be high. Now, after this, once we have this category added to the table, the final output should only have customer ID column, city column, zip code column, quantity and quantity category. That's it. So with these requirements, let's go to the DAX query view and understand how this can be achieved using DAX query and how we will eventually use that for preparing further visualizations. Obviously it will start with an evaluate statement. I'm going to use an add column statement here. And in this, the table that we're going to use is sales. I'm going to add a new column by the name of zip code. 
and we can use a function called related. Now the related function returns a related value from another table. Now, as you know, sales table and the zip code table are already related. So I can fetch the zip code column from that table. So I'm going to use zip code here. Now I'm going to look into the second requirement, which was to create that quantity category column. Okay. So I'm going to say quantity category and the conditions were if sales quantity is less than four, then it should say low. If quantity is equal to four or less than seven, then it should say medium and everything else it should say high. I'm going to close the bracket here. Now, if I just run this query here, it should fetch some results. As you see, it has given me all the columns from the sales table, adding the zip code column from the zip table and also adding that new column with the category. Now, finally, I don't need all the columns. I only need five of them, which is customer ID, city, zip code, quantity and category. Okay. So for this, I can use another function, which we've already used earlier, which is called select columns. Now I can add select columns at the beginning. And this is the entire table that we will be referring inside select column. So this entire piece would be considered as one table. Okay. Then add a comma. Now in the parameters, I can write the column names what I want. So I can write customer ID city zip code category first, and then sales quantity. I'm going to close the bracket. And if I run this, it will fetch the exact table that we wanted. Now, just a sanity step, DAX query view offers some really good formatting options. As you see, if the DAX query becomes long enough, it becomes very confusing. So the DAX query view provides you with the interesting option to format this entire piece. To format the entire DAX query, you can just select whatever you want to format and click on this format query here. You also have an option here to comment, uncomment and replace, find anything within your query editor. Okay. So now we have transformed our data and created something new out of it. What's the next step in this? The next obvious step is I can copy this entire code here, go to the report view, go to modeling tab and click on new table. Okay. And within this new table, I can just give it any name I want. Let's say sales category, remove this evaluate statement because evaluate is not required when we are writing our DAX query outside of DAX query view. Press on this tick icon here. Instantly, your new table has been created here, sales category. Okay. Now you can view this table inside table view. Now this table uh, is a physical table which exists within your model. You can use this table for your visualization purpose or any other data analysis purpose. Now the fifth and the final usage of DAX query view is pretty obvious. It's custom reporting. So as you see, we have anyways are able to create any type of table output with our DAX queries. Now it's as simple as copying that output. So let's say this was a custom requirement from a stakeholder and you created this DAX query to get this output. And now once you got that output, you can just copy this output, paste it into an Excel file and create that custom report. Isn't that cool? So these are the five main usages of DAX query view. Let me know in the comment section if you know of any other usages that you have come across. I'll be really interested to learn that. And if you learned something new today, then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell icon so that you do not miss any content that I upload. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.